D. W. Griffith is considered by most to be the great pioneer behind the art of cinema. This statement makes him sound more worthy of a textbook assignment than a Netflix rental, but his coining of basic cinematic techniques by no means precludes him from entertainment value. His two grand epics still pack an enormous punch and make for an excellent kickstart to your journey through the history of cinema. So let's begin with the first notable feature there ever was: the birth of a nation. If you can sit through all three hours of this silent epic without any breaks, you should be good to go from here on out. It's a Civil War movie, the first of three we'll be covering in the classic era of Hollywood movies. I'm sure true cinephiles can already guess the other two. The Birth of a Nation deals with material from both the northern and southern perspectives, and it depicts not only the war era itself, but also the antebellum and Reconstruction periods. In the process, we are privy to epic civil war battling, the realistic assassination of Lincoln, and the birth of the Ku Klux Klan. Herein lies the problem with this film: it's racist. So racist, in fact, that even a mild racist may be bothered by it today. Hell, even back then it was a problem. The major black characters are, in fact, not even black. They're white people painted in blackface, with the blackface not being efficient enough to be convincing, an effect that is, in fact, deliberate. There's one part after the war where a black man tries to rape a white woman. And she throws herself off a cliff in suicide, just to avoid the shame. <clears throat> Difficult to stomach, though some of the material may be. It's one of those movies you have to see before you can call yourself a true movie buff. And if you accept it for what it is, it's actually a lot of fun and very, very epic. Despite its box office success, however, Griffith did feel a little guilty about its content. For his next project, he decided to make another epic. This time, an ode to peace and love's struggles through the ages. The title is Intolerance, and the year is now 1916. It's ten times as epic and ridiculous as Birth of a Nation, though considerably more politically correct. It's comprised of four stories taking place at four separate time periods. There's the fall of Babylon sometime before the birth of Jesus. There's the story of the crucifixion of Jesus. There's the story of the persecution of the French Huguenots sometime after the birth of Jesus, and finally a modern tale about a struggling family in the industrial age, sometime around the birth of cinema. The Babylon segment is easily the grandest and most fun, with sets that'll make your jaw drop. And battle sequences that impress even today. The modern story is the cheesiest and most melodramatic, but if you can go along with it, it's a lot of fun. The French Huguenot story isn't focused on as much, but it's fun to try and keep track of the names. And the story of Jesus is dealt with least of all, and it almost seems like it was just thrown in for the hell of it. They all climax simultaneously at the end, and it adds up to a bit of a mind fuck. Keeping track of four silent stories over three hours is a little overwhelming and tedious, but ultimately you'll find that it's quite rewarding. Griffith's didactic tone is reinforced by the overabundance of title cards in his movies. You kind of just have to get into it and enjoy reading them. As for which of these two films is better, well, that's tough because it depends on who you ask. Many film historians seem to neglect intolerance and laud endlessly over the birth of a nation, accepting its racism as a necessary evil. A select few, however, such as the late great Pauline Kael, believe intolerance to be Griffith's masterpiece and perhaps the most accomplished work of silent cinema. As for me, I can understand both perspectives and enjoy both films for what they are. But if you can only bring yourself to sit through one of them, you gotta go with *Birth of a Nation*. Watching both, however, should add up to an awesome introduction into the world of silent movies and cinema as a whole. We have Griffith to thank not only for pioneering the art, but also for some great, 
if heavily qualified entertainment.